Hello, this is the American Medical Association's Moving Medicine video and podcast. Today, we're kicking off the AMA's Medical Student National Advocacy Week by talking with Brittany Ikwagu, the AMA's Government Relations Advocacy Fellow or GRAF in Washington, D.C., about the power of medical student advocacy to create change. I'm Todd Unger, AMA's Chief Experience Officer in Chicago. Brittany, welcome. It's so good to have you, and congratulations on becoming GRAF. Uh, You've got a lot of opportunity ahead to have big impact in the world of advocacy. I thought it'd be helpful for folks out there just to understand, you know, where did your passion for advocacy come from? Yes. Um, Thank you so much for the question. So um, I'm a medical student and, you know, everyone who wants to go into medicine and be a physician is because they want to help people, you know? And so as a physician, um, we learn, we get to help people one-on-one, patient to patient. Um, But what I've learned is that through advocacy, I can elevate that from an individual level to a population level. And so um, when I learned that that was something that I could do through advocacy, I just realized that, you know, that's where my passion lies, to be able to kind of emphasize um, the work that I want to do as a physician. It's kind of like an ability to scale you and all of your contributions beyond just kind of that individual level. Exactly. Um, So uh, you you stepped into this kind of position uh, as a medical student at a really pivotal time in healthcare advocacy. You know, what has it been like so far uh, and what, you know, what are you finding to be the big opportunities for you? Yeah, so there has been some unique challenges coming into the position in the middle of a global pandemic, especially right now in um, the virtual format. Let me tell you, Zoom fatigue is so real, Um, but it's really um, what's helped me is finding out different tips and tricks and things to try to get the medical students more engaged, whether it be um, trying to help them connect to why they want to be in advocacy in the first place. I've learned that that reason, advocacy in general, is a super personalized thing. Um, so being able to connect back to that reason and trying to get them more engaged by showing that together we can all make a big impact, no matter if we're in a virtual format or not. Well, you've answered my question, and I think it's a really a one word answer is can a medical student have a big impact in advocacy? Yes, yes, yes. A thousand percent. Yes. Um, I know uh, us as medical students, we feel that, you know, we're at the beginning of our medical careers. We're at the bottom, you know, the proverbial, you know, totem pole. But we can have really, really big impacts. I've seen that firsthand just in my short three months as graph of the work that we do can really be amplified. Is that a surprise to you? Um, And do you think that most of your fellow medical students understand, you know, just how much sway they can have in in, in advocacy and, uh, you know, in policymaking? Yes, um, I definitely, at the beginning of this, I didn't think that, you know, something that I see personally as a medical student on my rotations, how I could use that example to try to make sure that it doesn't happen again. I think that um, a lot of, you know, my fellow medical students, they also don't understand that, um, which is why I love being in this position so I can kind of dispel that myth. Um, We do have a lot of power as medical students to help our future patients. Well, one of the ways obviously that you learned about that is through your involvement in the AMA medical uh, student Mm -hmm. section. Can you talk a little bit, you know, for those out there that are not familiar with the MSS as we call it, Mm -hmm. you know, what is it and how Mm -hmm. does it give uh, medical students a voice? Yes, uh, I love the AMA MSS. That's kind of what got me super, super passionate about advocacy. So we are one of the sections, um, I think the best section um, within the House of Delegates filled with medical students, filled with some of the most innovative and inspiring and passionate people that I have ever you know, had the privilege to meet. And so we get together, we come up with our own resolutions, our own policies based off of things um, that we see. Do you think uh, that kind of experience and, I mean, leadership training is going to benefit you personally as you proceed into your residency and beyond? 
Yes, for sure. I think that my involvement within the MSS and everyone who is working with the MSS, we are, you know, developing the leadership skills to be the future leaders in medicine um, and to really help out everyone. Um, You talked a little bit about why advocacy is so important to you personally. Mm -hmm. You know, why is it that all medical students need to take time for advocacy it's probably not something that, you know, is in the, the core curriculum there to, uh, that you have mm-hmm. to do. But I think, are you, are you finding out that you and other medical students are realizing this is something you really do need to get involved with? Yes, yes, yes. It's very important because we have the power now as medical students to impact not only our future patients' lives, um, but it impact our future lives as, you know, either resident physicians or as physician, practicing attending physicians ourselves. Um, we can help make decisions and policies uh, that will help those in the future. And then it will also, as I said before, really help with professional development, you know, help us learn ongoing skills and, and knowledge uh, beyond the classroom. I mentioned you, you know, you were, uh, you're in this position now and focused on advocacy in the middle of a pandemic. One of the things, you know, I hear constantly from the different physicians that we talk to is that, uh, you know, the pandemic made everything that was bad uh, all, all, way worse. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, are there any particular issues that you and, and your fellow com- uh, medical students are particularly focused on right now? Yes, as part of our National Advocacy Week this year is moving forward with the new normal medicine, as you just mentioned, um, because of the pandemic, the entire medical committee community has had to pivot um, into this new normal that we find ourselves in. Um, so something that we have all been super focused on is telehealth coverage. That has been a really important thing, especially now in terms of COVID, um, achieving health equity and maternal health. Health equity has really kind of permeated and everything and within the medical community. And we kind of want to keep the pressure on that because uh, health equity for all hasn't been achieved yet. Uh, We're also talking um, about um, the Medicare payment cuts as well as graduate medical education and expanding more residency spots for us. Well, I'm, I'm hoping you can define what the new normal is. We're all waiting to understand uh, that path yeah. forward. Um, you know, Medical Student National Advocacy Week, um, uh, you know, big things on your agenda. How does that differ from other kind of grassroots efforts out there uh, that medical students can get involved with? So um, for the week, we have a ton of different advocacy activities, particularly getting involved with social media activism, um, making sure everyone gets on these different platforms to kind of amplify our message. I love that because one of the things we're really working on here is, you know, making physician voices and obviously the voice of medical students the loudest in the room. Uh, Mm -hmm. You know, when it comes to healthcare and medical care, that's the way it should be. Um, one of the other benefits of, uh, despite Zoom fatigue, uh, is the ability through this kind of virtual approach to attract some really terrific speakers. Can you talk about who will be uh, addressing uh, the students at this? Yes, we have gotten some really rock star speakers to come speak with us in National Advocacy Week. We first have the Honorable Janet, Janet Woodcock, uh, who is the Acting Commissioner of the FDA. Uh, we have the Honorable Dr. Uh, Rachel Levine, who is the Assistant Secretary of Health, as well as Dr. Siobhan Westcott, who is the Director of the American Indian Health Program at the University of Nebraska Medical Center, as well as a number of other great representatives like uh, Representative uh, Kim Schreier, um, as well as Representative Robin Kelly. Um, so we're super excited. It sounds really exciting and a great mm-hmm. opportunity for medical students to get involved in advocacy. Um, you know, for, for, for this event and beyond, do you have any advice for students who do want to get more involved? Yes, um, so there will be a registration link for Advocacy Week uh, that'll be available in the description of this episode. And beyond this week, I'm getting involved uh, with the MSS. There's always different leadership opportunities as well as different events um, that we hold. And you can find out more about the medical student section on the AMA website. Uh, Brittany, thank you so much for being here. I can't help but feel your enthusiasm on the other end of this call. And I wish you the best of luck in uh, making an impact this year. Uh, That wraps uh, up our episode of Moving Medicine for today. We'll be back with another one shortly. Uh, But don't miss 
another episode of AMA Moving Medicine. You can subscribe uh, at Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you listen to your podcasts or check us out at ama-assn.org slash podcast. Thanks for joining us. Please take care.